On today's episode of Tubby Time, we are using these plain old store-bought biscuits to figure out how evenly and consistently our smoker cooks. Let's get started. I am looking forward to popping these open. This is one of my favorite things to do in the whole wide world, but we gotta talk before we start that. So today we're using biscuits to figure out how well our smoker cooks. I'm gonna be honest with you, I should have done this a long, long time ago. If you've watched our 20 pound brisket cook video, that was when I first got the smoker and I struggled the entire time to maintain temps. And if I had done this experiment sooner, maybe around then, maybe before I cooked a 20 pound brisket, I probably wouldn't have struggled as much. So for anyone that's new to smoking, definitely consider doing this experiment. If you're a seasoned smoker, then you probably already know what's going on here, but it's always fun to do this from time to time. So today we're doing what I like to call a practice burn. Basically, I'm not cooking anything besides these biscuits, which we'll get into. I'm just burning a fire, seeing what happens, seeing how my smoker reacts. Biscuits are a cheap way to figure out how well our smoker cooks because you can lay them out inside the smoker spaced out and you can see where your hot zones are, your cold zones and whatnot. Now there's two reasons you'd really do this experiment. The first is, like I said, to figure out how your smoker cooks. Using the biscuits simulates food and it can tell you on which part of your smoker you would need to put things. So maybe if you were cooking a rack of ribs and you had really uneven temps between these two areas, the center and the end, you could move them a certain way to make them cook more evenly. The second reason we do this is, like I said, it's a practice burn. So we're just burning wood. We're able to see what happens when we put maybe another split on the fire. Maybe if we close the stack a little bit, maybe if we back down the air intake on the firebox. There's all sorts of different things you can figure out while you're doing this experiment, while you're not cooking food. So you're not gonna ruin any food. You can just do this and figure out all your little tweaks you need to make for when you are cooking that delicious brisket. And you might be saying, well, Josh, can't you just use thermometers to figure out how your smoker cooks and how the temperatures vary throughout the cooker? Yeah, of course you can. And that's what I have these down here for today. The problem with just using thermometers though, is the fact that you might have a hot zone right here, but then if you put a brisket on, that temperature might actually go down here and be hot over here because all the air is traveling under the brisket and going out the stack. So using the biscuits gives us a better idea of what's going to cook faster when we actually have food on the smoker. So you might say, oh, these biscuits cooked fastest in the center. That means the heat traveled under the brisket and my point is going to be, you know, cooking faster than the flat or something like that. I don't understand. It's science. Don't ask me. I, I, I'm supposed to understand the heat and the way the airflow happens, but I'm dumb. So, but let's look at our temperatures. So right off the bat, starting up top, we are at 225 and then I have four probes space throughout the cooker. So the first probe is right here, okay? It goes sort of in order from firebox to a smokestack. So 239, 233, pretty consistent. And then we have a 288 random warm spot and then the smokestack 245. So if I open the cooker up, you can see that you have the 233, the other 233. Here's the big one, the 288, and then your smokestack 245. Now with my particular smoker, you see I have that plate that pushes the heat coming out of the firebox down and sort of forces it to come up where I would assume would be right here in the middle. So let's pop these bad boys open and see if that translates to real life or translates to the food, I mean, that, that makes more sense. Ooh, bam. So I'm just gonna space these out pretty evenly throughout the zones we have. And there's eight in this container. So we're gonna do this twice. The first time is gonna be just with normal fire, no modifications. And the second time, we have some fire brick we're gonna put in. So this will give us a good idea if that fire brick actually does anything. So let's close this up and let it get back to temp. And here is the fire brick we're gonna be placing in afterwards to see if that actually makes any difference in the way this smoker cooks. Now please keep in mind, I am not the one that invented this biscuit cooking experiment thing, okay? There are plenty of videos on YouTube that show people doing the same exact experiment. I'm doing it in my case because no smoker cooks exactly the same. And this is why you should do it with your smoker as well. Just because someone might have the same exact smoker that I have and did the same exact experiment on YouTube does not mean I'm going to see the same exact results. They'll probably be similar, but it's not gonna be 100% matching. That's why I wanna do this my way and see what I can do to make my temperatures more consistent. So we're gonna run these at about 350. 
So I, I need to add a split to the fire, but we're gonna run these about 350 and we're gonna see after five minutes what the result is. Um, maybe some are done, maybe some are not. They probably won't be done actually anywhere close to five minutes in, but we're gonna see what happens. So let's keep an eye on this. We'll get it up to 350 and go from there. You know, I'm really not used to running this pit higher than 275. So I'm trying to get this fire to keep up. Which this is great because you can see how many logs it actually takes to uh, get your fire to the temperature you want. So talking a little bit about the experimentation of this whole process, you'll notice I have my firebox door damper, I should say, closed halfway. I normally don't run it that way, but I realized the last time I cooked a brisket, I had a bunch of heat that was building up at the smokestack. And I read on some forums that with this particular smoker, if you close the damper halfway, it'll allow for that airflow to be backed down just a little bit. Now, typically I don't like running it with anything closed. Um, I'll close the door, but I'll have the damper all the way open. But so far looking at it, it has actually helped keep the temperatures consistent throughout the smoker. There is still a hot spot, and we're gonna look at that right now because we've just reached 15 minutes, but it's much better than it was before. So let's take a look at our biscuits. This is what we're running, still somewhat of a hot spot. We just back that down. So let's open this up. Okay. So just quick look, none of them are done yet, but I can tell you that these on this end look a little bit more done compared to those over here. Still a lot of liquid. These are really hardening up pretty well. One and back, not so much, but right here, even this one, you know, <laughs> it's probably gonna taste like brisket. Yeah, these two in front are definitely the most done. And then back, eh, not so much. So we'll let these go for another five to 10 minutes and we'll come back and see which ones were done the first and which ones still need a little bit more time. I just wanna show you guys what's going on with this thing. So if I open the firebox damper all the way, see how quickly that temperature second from the bottom's climbing and that hot spot we were talking about. I mean, in 10 seconds, it's gone up 20 degrees. Look at it, it just keeps going. And it's gonna hit 400, definitely. Got a clean burning fire, but still. That is the inconsistency we don't want. Oh yeah, there we go, 401. And we got a pretty ripping fire in there, so let me close this up a little bit, not all the way. Close it to about there. And watch how fast it's dropping. Dropped 20 degrees in the time it took me to get the camera from, <laughs> from over there to here. Pretty insane how just closing that will affect the entire fire. And unfortunately, you're gonna start seeing a little bit of white smoke out of there because we're not letting that airflow go in, but pretty cool. Let's check on our biscuits. Oh yeah, here we go. So these, this one, that's done without a doubt. This one done this one's still a little feels a little soft these over here these still feel a little soft too but let's take this one off and we'll take this one off too so if we open this up oh yes nice and fluffy pull apart delicious hope i'm in frame i can't tell smoked brisket pretty good all right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let these other biscuits cook, and then we'll come back, install our fire brick, and see if that helps with any kind of temperature differentials using the next batch of biscuits. So I took the biscuits off about five, 10 minutes later. I wanna show you the inconsistencies between some of them. This one was sort of near the smokestack. I think it was the farthest one. Very dark on the bottom here, whereas this one was closest to the firebox. Notice there's barely any smoke on here. All these, like, that's another one. I think that was opposite the other one. It was uh, near the firebox. So that plate works very well, but it's really pushing all of the smoke and heat toward the chimney. So now using a gloved hand, let's get this thing out. I'm gonna try my best to place these without killing myself here. Yep, that's not gonna work. Let's move this out a little bit more. Much better, okay. Now let's try it. So I'm gonna put six in here. Basically lining either side and still allowing for the grease to go down. And hopefully this will allow for more consistent temperatures. 
And remember, you don't want to use just regular old brick for this. This is specifically designed for fire pits, for barbecues. Don't use regular brick because it will crack and spall. All right, that's what we're working with. Looks pretty even. Let's push this back in. I want to make sure our probes are still connected here. So it looks like most of them are. Now we'll close it down and get it back up to temp. So it's been about 10 minutes and right off the bat, I can tell you that the temperatures are more consistent across the board, definitely. Smokestack still being the coolest, but even the, the temperature difference between the two uh, middle zones is pretty good. It's still, you know, 20, 30 degrees, but it's better than it was before. And up top we're reading 275, so about a 20 degree difference between the grate and the top. So same thing as before, let's open this up. We're gonna lay our biscuits in the exact same order we did before. Hopefully, these middle ones will cook a little bit slower this time. Looking good. Close this up. And we're still gonna try to maintain that 350-ish temperature throughout the cooker. Let's see how we do. We'll come back in 15 minutes. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. We're still having some temperature fluctuations. Like, that's 372 right now. That's insane. And the vent's still closed, partially. So let's look here. They, they look at first glance like they're cooking more evenly. Like, you know, these are, oh, those are done by far done. Yeah. But like, I don't know. The center is definitely, I think all of them in the center are done. Yeah. So we can take those off, but these probably need a few more minutes. That one's actually pretty much done, I think. But these over here, a little bit soft. We're taking these off now and we'll give these a few more minutes. So I think in conclusion, what we learned today is that the center of this smoker gets extremely hot. And I noticed with the fire brick that the temperatures don't fluctuate that much. So if I forget to put another log on and you know the temperatures start to drop, they don't drop that quickly. The fire brick really retains that heat. But as far as evening out the cooking temperature throughout the cooker, I'm not sure if this is the best way to go. Maybe I'll try getting some tuning plates and putting those in. I've said I've wanted to do that for a while, but I'm not really sure. This method of closing the firebox damper a little bit seems to help to a degree, but I did do it once in a while and there was some real big jumps in temperature, like, you know, 100 degrees. So we don't want that in the center of our cooker. Um, like I said before, when I put a brisket on here, all that heat ends up going to the smokestack and then unfortunately sometimes burning the point, or excuse me, sometimes burning the flat of the brisket. And we don't want that, obviously. Um, so I might try cooking it fat side down next time to see if that helps a little bit. I'm sure it would, um, but you know, it is what it is. I really wish they didn't have that deflector plate and I understand why they did it. So the heat doesn't just all go right to the top, but it's still sort of a pain and it still prevents even cooking throughout the smoker. So we'll keep working on it. And the biggest thing is practice. You know, if you own a smoker, like this, or you're just getting into smoking, practicing, doing dry burns, dry burns, that made sense, right? Doing practice burns like this really does help you to understand your smoker, what happens when you put a log on, how well does it retain temps, and I'm sure the fire brick here will help tremendously in the winter time here in the Northeast when we can't maintain temps for crap. I've tried, it sucks. So I'm gonna keep those in there for now, see how it goes. I don't know, we'll see what happens. But thank you guys so much for checking out this episode of Tubby Time. If you did like what you saw, please smash the like button. It helps the algorithm, gets our video out to more people. Also, comment on things you wanna see us maybe make in the smoker or here on the Blackstone Griddle. That's what we're all about, outdoor cooking and comedy because we're just so hilarious. But until next time, everyone, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay tubby.